Hi guys, welcome back to the studio. So yeah, I haven't done a video in here for absolutely ages. So, but today I'm getting ready for some weddings I've got coming up at the end of the week. So I thought it'd be really good as well to go through some editing with you. So today I'm gonna to be talking about how I edit my Fuji Raw files in Lightroom. So around about 12 months ago, I did a couple of different videos regarding sharpening Fuji Raw files in Lightroom. But over the last 12 months, Adobe have added a lot of different features to their software uh, to help us Fuji users. And I thought it'd be really good today to go over these uh, improvements and see how they compare to the old methods that I used to use. So if you haven't checked the uh, other two videos out, I'll leave the link in the description. One was sharpening Fuji Raw files in Lightroom, the other in Photoshop. So two different ways of doing it, two different results. Um, but this is a completely new method and we're gonna compare the three, to see which is the best. Okay guys, so let's get over to the computer and get stuck into it. So here we are in Lightroom guys, and I'm just gonna quickly tell you which version we're working on. So you know, it is Adobe Lightroom Classic 8.3.1. So if you're working on a newer or older version, you might see things slightly different to what I'm seeing, but the whole process should be very much the same. So I've chosen this image to work on today as there is lots of texture and details in it. So I think it's the ideal image to work on. If you're new to Lightroom, uh, you can add in these Fujifilm simulations to your RAW file. If you go up to the Profile tab, click Browse, and then scroll down, you will find well, you will find your film simulations. So as you can see here, we use the XT3. So we've got a Turner, Proneg High, etc., etc. Today, I think we'd use the Velvia film simulation because it's a landscape shot and it does bring out a lot of the vibrancy and contrast in the image. So I'm gonna choose Velvia today for that. And I always find that Velvia oversaturates the image, but we're gonna sort that out in a minute. So I'm just gonna quickly run through a very, very basic edit of this image before we talk about the nitty gritty uh, side of things, which is sharpening and detail. So um, this image is a little bit off in terms of white balance, it's a bit quite a lot of blue in the image. So we're just gonna warm that up uh, with the temperature slider. Somewhere around about there looks good to me. Still a little green, so I'm just gonna add in just a little bit more magenta to the image, somewhere around about there. I think that kind of fixes that. Um, I'm just gonna boost the exposure a little bit as well. This image was taken at sunrise, so the, uh, the image was very, very golden. There was a lot of golden light, but as we can see here, it's very green looking and this wasn't how it looked at all. But we're gonna sort that out in a second. I'm just gonna boost the contrast up a little bit as well. Only a little bit because Velvia adds in a lot of contrast. So I'm not gonna worry about that too much. Just reduce the highlights a fraction. Yeah, pretty, pretty happy with how that's going right now. So I'm gonna move down to the HSL tab. And I'm gonna make a few adjustments to these greens because uh, I'm not really enjoying the greens whatsoever in this image. So I'm gonna click on this little tab here and I'm gonna select an area of very vibrant green and I'm just gonna drag the slider down. And as you can see, that's taking a lot of that green out of the image. Don't wanna take it all out, but... And then I'm gonna to go to the hue slider and I'm also going to add in a bit more yellow to the greens. Now I'm going to come up to the saturation and the vibrance and just boost the saturation a fraction of the overall image and just reduce the vibrancy a little bit. And that's a lot closer to how the image actually looked when I was there. So the first image we're going to sharpen is my kind of old way of processing Fuji Raw files. If I didn't want to take it into Photoshop, this would be the way that I'd do it. So this is Adobe's default sharpening, if you like. Um, what you tend to find is if you increase the sharpness, I'll, I'll do it way more than you know you should do it, but what you can see is you can see you get these kind of weird artifacts where all the rock details start to go all kind of wormy and horrible looking. You can really see it here, it looks disgusting. Um, that's mainly because we've obviously pushed this slider way more than we, we should have done. But basically, you've got two options really. You can either take this uh, default sharpening to the point where you start to see the artifacts or you can apply detail sharpening, which is kind of the way I like prefer to do it. What I would do is uh, drag the detail slider up to 95, between 95 and 100, um, and then just bring in the amount slider until 
I'm satisfied with the amount of sharpening before we start to get those wormy, funky artifacts. So generally it's around 35, and then I use the masking slider just to mask out the areas that I don't want sharpening. So we don't really need to sharpen the sky. So if you hold down Alt um, and then drag it, you can see which areas are being sharpened and which are not. So the black areas are not being sharpened, the white areas are. So I'll probably drop in that amount of masking. So we applied sharpening to pretty much everything apart from the sky, really. So that would be my kind of default Lightroom sharpening, which I pretty much use all of the time if I don't want to take my images into Photoshop. So my second method of sharpening the Fuji RAF file would be to take the RAF file into Photoshop and apply the sharpening in Photoshop. So first of all, we need to take the sharpening amount down to zero, completely take out any sharpening that Lightroom's doing, make sure you've not used any clarity as well, and then right click, edit in, edit in Photoshop, and that will take the image into Photoshop CC. And here we have it. Now what I generally do is duplicate the layer. So I'll press Ctrl and J to duplicate the layer. And then I will apply my sharpening to the image. And I do this with unsharp mask. Um, it's just the way I prefer to do it. There's lots of different ways of sharpening in Photoshop, but I like unsharp, unsharp mask. Now the amount of sharpening is gonna depend on the size of the image. So if you've already cropped into your image and your image is smaller, you're likely to want to do less sharpening. So for example, if your, if your image is at say 6,000 pixels wide, you might wanna go up to around about 190-ish with your sharpening. If you've maybe resized your image before or cropped in heavily, then that amount of sharpening is gonna be less. Um, but for this image, I've chosen 194, as I have found that that is providing a really nice level of sharpening to these details here in the foreground without adding in any kind of weird artifacts. So this is with the layer turned off without any sharpening at all. And this is with the sharpening applied. And that's really bringing out the details in these rocks here. Let's just have a quick look at the background as well. And as we can see, we've got some lovely details in the background. This is before the sharpening, this is after. Massive, massive improvement. Um, now, obviously you could go one step further apply a layer mask to this image and then just mask out the sky or any other areas that you didn't want to apply the sharpening to. So you can be really selective with this, which really helps improve your image if you want to you know, really take your image to the next level. So flatten the image and then press, uh, sorry, file, save, and then that will take your file back into Lightroom. And here you can see the edited TIFF file, it will turn it into a TIFF file and this will be your final edited sharpened file that you've brought back from Photoshop into Lightroom. So this is the unsharpened, this is the sharpened. So this is a very, very good way of sharpening obviously any file that you've got, but it is an extra step that you have to take. So these were my two previous methods of sharpening Fuji Raw files and really getting the most out of those files in that particular application. I think the Photoshop way works better, You've got far more control and the end result is a lot better. That being said, you don't always wanna take that extra step. So if you're shooting a wedding or something like that and you, you're processing three or 400 files, you don't wanna be taking each one into Photoshop. Uh, and I find that the Xtrans files are sharp enough for portraits straight out of camera pretty much. So I don't generally apply a lot of sharpening to my portrait images or my documentary images. So the next method is these new features that Adobe have introduced over the last 12 months. So I'm gonna take you back to the original raw file and we are going to process this as a DNG. So here we have the original raw file with no editing done to it whatsoever. And we're going to convert this to an Adobe friendly DNG file. So uh, Adobe have their version of a raw file, which is called a DNG file, a digital negative file. And it's uh, their you know, specific generic, if you like, version of a raw file. So as opposed to like a RAF file, which is you know, specific to Fuji or a NEF file, which is specific to Nikon, um, the DNG file is 
Adobe's version of that file. So it's basically going to convert our RAF file to a DNG file and apply some enhancements to it as well. So if you're new to Lightroom, this is kind of hidden away. Um, if you right click on your image down here in the film strip, you will get enhanced details. And if you click on that, we will bring this little box up, basically tell you what it's going to do. It's going to enhance the details, which uses machine learning to improve details and reduce artifacts in most raw files. The enhanced result will be saved in a new DNG image. So it's going to enhance our file for us. So you literally click, just click enhance and it's going to bring up a DNG file. Now this is the DNG file and I've applied exactly the same settings to it that I've applied to the other images that we went through earlier in the video. Now this is the DNG file as you can see up here it's got the same number uh, but it's got enhanced.dng after it and uh, this is going to help us apply sharpening in a different way because now we can apply sharpening in the normal way, if you like, um, we can use the amount slider to uh, get the correct sharpening, basically. And uh, you know, we can push this as far as we need to to get the correct amount of sharpening. Now, I've, I've found that you know, once we start getting up into the sort of 90 to 100, we start getting, you know, it's looking real grungy and horrible. So you definitely don't want to overdo this. But um, I reckon probably around 60 is uh, pretty good, and you can get a good level of sharpening with the amount slider. 60 between 60 and 70 and Adobe have recently introduced in the texture sort slider as well which is another new feature and actually I'm really liking the texture slider I think it was introduced for smoothing skin uh, details in skin for like portraits and stuff but it, um, it does quite well with landscape photos as well and uh, the texture slider kind of attacks the image in a different way. It focuses more on the mid-range frequencies as opposed to the high frequencies. So um, like sharpening and clarity attacks the edges of uh, the high frequency areas of the image there. So like the edges of rocks, the edges of the grass and that type of thing. And it adds in kind of contrast edge detail to like make those edges stand out. Whereas the texture slider attacks the, I'm using the word attack, but <laughs> it kind of fits it attacks the um, kind of mid-range frequencies. So it's going to bring out the details in pretty much everything, not just the edge detail. So let's let's kind of uh, zoom in to the background here and just see what it does to the, to the texture in the background. So yeah, as you can see, it really brings out those. If we take it down, it's having a negative effect, obviously, but we can uh, certainly bring in a lot more detail there without getting those wormy artifacts that you would if you use the clarity slider or the sharpening slider um, before we'd gone to enhance details. So, but what I've found is if you overdo it, it starts to kind of oversaturate some of the colors. And as you can see here, it's really made those kind of oranges in the tips of the grass really vibrant. So you've got to be really careful about how far you push it. And I've found that just tweaking it a little bit around about 10 to 15 really does uh, bring out a lot of that detail that's kind of lost in these area of grasses and uh, the more kind of mid frequency areas of the image it's really added some de texture and detail to these rocks in the background and actually the, the amount of detail that we can see here in the background considering the distance we are away from the camera is quite incredible. So now we've edited the three different images in three different ways, let's throw up comparison review and have a look at them side by side to see which is the best and see which image brings out the most detail, which method of sharpening brings out the best detail. So first up we've got the original file here that we edited in Lightroom, as you can see the detail slider is set to 100 and we're going to throw up the comparison view and in the second window here, the active window, we're gonna bring in our TIFF file. Now this is the file that we edited into Photoshop and we did the sharpening in Photoshop. As you can see there's no Lightroom sharpening applied. So let's just zoom in to a one-to-one -one ratio on these rocks here and have a quick look. And I think we can clearly see in the Lightroom version, it looks a little bit more grungy. I think there's a lot more contrast edge detail to the grasses. Um, it does look a little bit sharper, um, but it does look a bit more grungy too. I think the the Photoshop file is a little bit more pleasing to the eye to me, even though it's not quite so contrasty and grainy and gritty. 
Um, and for that reason, I prefer it. I think the, the level of um, the level of control you have with Photoshop sharpening, you know, for me, it does. It, it is worth it, it is worth that extra step if you're doing a landscape f photograph. I think just taking it into Photoshop and and just tweaking it there, it does help. But really, you know, side by side, there's not a massive amount of difference. Um, you know, you quite easily get away with doing this if you didn't want to take it into Photoshop. So, you know, two really good methods of sharpening your images. So let's quickly throw up the one that we edited with the enhanced details, and that is the purple image here. As you can see, this is the enhanced .dng file. So. I think actually straight away you can see that it looks different to the way that we process the Lightroom file. So let's again zoom in a one-to-one -one on these and have a little look at it. And I think you can see more detail in some of the areas of the grass. I do think it looks a little bit clearer. But looking at it as well, I think you notice that the oranges um, and the reds are a little bit more prominent in the grasses as well so it's obviously added in some saturation to some of the elements in the images you can really see it here um, some of these oranges and reds uh, but you don't see that at all in this image um, let's have a little look in the background I think you can really notice in the background actually where the texture sliders come into play you can really see the details in this old quarry here um, there's a lot more detail in the, in the rock definitely up here too you can definitely see a lot more detail in this area so um, you know both methods have worked really well here they both sharpen the image well without adding in too many artifacts to the image the enhanced details has added in some saturation to certain elements of the image now whether this is seen as a positive or a negative I'm not really sure I mean I quite like the way it's bringing out some of these oranges actually in the grasses it kind of adds a little bit more um, depth to the image it kind of uh, adds a bit more vibrance to the image as well with it being like a sunrise shot you know there was a lot of oranges and reds in the image so you know there's definitely a difference between the two um, whether it's going to be a negative or a positive I don't know it really depends on the image that you're editing for me in this particular image I actually prefer the enhanced DNG file with the texture slider just uh, tweak slightly I think it does you know boost the whole clarity of the image and it does make it look uh, you know more pleasing to the eye over the original Lightroom sharpened image so very very similar results uh, to be honest uh, three completely different ways of editing a Fuji RAW file all with uh, you know great results and I think you know uh, depending on the image you've got will depend on which way you decide uh, to enhance those details so yeah pretty good comparison i think i uh, hope you uh, enjoyed the video i hope you got something from it guys i uh, really appreciate your time so guys if you like the video please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already and all that good stuff and i will see you next week when hopefully we'll be back out in the landscape shooting some landscape photography okay guys uh, take care and i'll see you soon